Hello and welcome to this SQL tutorial with me, James from Matador Software. And today we're looking at the string split function within SQL Server. So the first thing that we need as I'm showcasing here is just to check our compatibility level for our databases. We can use this short script. It's over 130 or 130 or over, which actually translates to SQL Server um, 2016 or above. So now that we've done this, we can look at the actual functionality. Now, essentially with string split, what we do is we take um, a string, quite often this may be sort of CSV type data, comma separated, a row of values um, within a string, um, as I'm showcasing here, or it could be the results from an app, maybe questionnaire within a source app. Now, there's some things to note. You have to have SQL Server 2016 or above. Um, we do use single character delimiters and also you've got to be careful with things like leading and trailing spaces because it will spit those back out. But if you're willing to, if you can cope with that, then you can have a really performant um, and useful function here. So it can showcase a very basic comparison between the standard sort of um, row of data within a string and as it's broken out with the string split. Um, into substrings and put into um, different rows. And this would be quite a common use case with CSV files, as I said. Now, one thing to note as well, um, as you can see here, I've added in some separate commas, so they will be reflected um, as an empty space um, when we act, if we um, populate more than one comma. So it's something to be mindful of, especially if you're taking um, quite messy CSV data. But what we can do is we can use trim within our where clause um, and we can take that value. <laughs> so it's important to note that SQL split, the column that it returns, we can alias, but it's just a value column. And we can say where that's not e equal to that empty space. Um, and that gets rid of that sort of nasty output when we have too many commas um, within our data. So we're now going to move on to a more meaningful example with some stored table data. Um, but in order to piece everything together, our string split is just going to return um, those values. So the, the string broken into the substrings. So we need a way to connect this with the other columns that we have available. So we can actually use the cross apply operator, which is like a join but it returns only the rows from the left table expression if it matches with the right table expression. So we'll see how this works. So we saw that we had some complaints data likely from uh, the output of an app and we had those all in one large string across the row separated by a comma. So let's see how we can intertwine the results of that string split um, and also connect it up with uh, IDs and departments for a bit more meaningful insight. So again, uh, really the string split populates that value column. We can alias it with complaints, we'll make it a bit more relevant. Um, and then, like I said, we need to use cross apply that operator um, and then the string split function. So we'll take the complaints column and our separator, which will be a comma in this case. Now let's see what happens if we execute that. There we go. We get um, by ID, we get those complaints um, nicely formatted out. Uh, we don't have to worry about capitalization. That was part of it just to show that, um, you know, uh, make it realistic in the way that people input data. So that's working as we expect, but we don't have, we didn't have a method um, within that string split to, to order it. So we'll just include order by, um, and in this case, we can just say the department and leave it ascending. So we get human resources where we had two complaints in that large string, IT support where we had three and sales uh, for two complaints. So that's great. Now we can actually, uh, I guess, improve on this slightly if we want to by combining aggregate functions uh, with our string split function. So again, we've got, maybe we want to view this by department. Um, so we can alias the count of that value column where we're going to use string split as a number of complaints um, from that complaints tracker table. Again, we need the cross apply uh, to evaluate sides of the table expressions together, much like we would with a join. And again, string split complaints, and we need to separate by a comma. So 
we'll encapsulate that within single quotation marks. And now we can use our group by. Of course, we want to see this by department. And when we execute this, we should see the number of complaints as successfully um, taken apart into substrings by the string split function uh, by department, which is correct, three with IT support and the rest with two. And again, if we want to order this by, uh, we could order it by the count of complaints. So the count of that value column that populated the substrings in descending order, fine. Uh, but we have a tie with two complaints with sales and human resources. So we could also order this by department um, and show it in ascending order where human resources H comes before S in the alphabet. So we will see that there and um, potentially it's a more relevant um, piece of data for us to consume. There we go. Uh, very handy function. Uh, performs well if you're happy to take on some of the uh, prerequisites. And as usual, like, comment, subscribe and share. Thank you.